y'all? I said, what's up, y'all? Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Nah, I'm just messing with y'all, man. This your boy, Knockout Boxing 86 TV, and we in here. So check this out, bro. Before we get going on our video, smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Share the video. Turn on your notifications and go follow me on Twitter at KOBoxing86TV. And if you got a breakdown or a prediction you want me to do, knockoutboxing 86 at yahoo.com is the email address. And don't forget that we live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. And you can also catch us live every Sunday morning with the singing OG KQKC Boxing Network, Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. But let's go ahead and get it popping. Let's get into our video. And today, Jamel Charlo did an interview with Brian Custer on the Last Stand podcast. And he had a lot to say. He talked about Terrence Bud Crawford. He talked about Tim Zhu. He talked about moving up to 160 or staying at 154. He talked about a lot. We're going to cover it in the video. But the main things we're going to get on, we got to talk about his comments about Bud Crawford. And we got to talk about the bombshell he dropped as it pertained to Earl Spence. First and foremost, all he said about Tim Zhu is that his time is coming. It's basically that there's levels to this, and Tim Zhu ain't got nothing he ain't seen, and he ready for that when the time comes. Expect that fight, he said, to be announced for him in July, maybe August at the latest. So he's coming back real soon. As far as what he said about Terrence Bud Crawford, man, look. He told, he said, look, Terrence, if you want to come up here to 154, I will oblige. We can get, the, we can get this smoke. We can fight. But you got business you need to handle down there. You too little. You coming up from 140. And you ain't you can't take the heat that I'm bringing. Feeling like he's a bigger, stronger man. But all in all, that he won't get it popping. And it's all it's all good with him. If Bud want to bring his ass up to 154, come on, come on up here and, and, and get your ass whooping. But perhaps the most talked about news and kind of the biggest news is what he said about 154 and what he said about Earl Spence. Because up until this point, Jamel Charlo had kind of been off on the would he fight Earl Spence. And, you know, that's my brother. We in the same camp, blah, blah, blah. But he didn't change his tune. And I must say I like it. But while liking it, if you're a Jamel Charlo fan, it should raise a lot of red flags to you. And I'm explaining to you what I'm talking about. So Jamel Charlo said he ain't moving up to 160 no time soon. He making 154 pounds, easiest pot. And uh, as it pertains to Earl Spence moving up, he said, yeah, he'll fight Earl. If the money right, then we can get it popping and we can fight. He'll defend his titles against Earl Spence Jr. And we already know that EJ Earl Spence Jr. said that, shit, if you my homeboy, shit, you, you won't get in the way of my opportunity, you'll fight me. And we can be friends after, but we can get this bag. So Earl and I already said, if he move up to 154, it's going to be to be a two-division champion. When he move up to 154, whoever got the belts, that's who he want, Jamel Charlo included. So now they both saying that they will fight each other, um, which I'm for. Y'all know how I go. The only person Jamel Charlo should not fight is Jamal Charlo. The only person that Jesse Bam Rodriguez should never get in the ring with is Josh Franco. Monster, anyway, should never fight his brother. The Abdullah, the Mason brothers, Abdullah Mason, he should never fight his brothers. The brothers should never fight each other. The Maloney twins, they should never fight. If it ain't your blood, brother, bro, I'm not trying here. None of that. Get it popping. Get it popping. Especially at the highest level. Like prospects coming up, all right, cool. But if y'all getting in the way of each other, greatness, your pursuit of fighting the best, if you're perceived to be two of the best, I'm not trying to hear that we friends excuse. Y'all can beat y'all can fight for the bag, get your money, put on a great performance, and then y'all can go to dinner afterwards or somebody end up in the hospital, visit each other in the hospital. You know what I'm saying? Do what y'all need to do to make sure y'all relationships stay firm. But friends in boxing, nah, bro, there ain't no reason for us not to get big fights as fight fans. Y'all make enough money, get that shit going. Right? So that's good to hear. But what I don't hear people talking about and what I want to address, and, and this ain't making no excuses, make the fight, but I do want people to understand coaching in the sport of boxing matters because the instructions that you get, the training camp that you have, the adjustments that people tell you to make, the game plan that you have going into the fight, all that gives you an edge or gives you a disadvantage in preparing for a fight. 
And I gotta say that if Earl Spence and Jamel Charlo do fight in the next couple years, or they do fight one day, bro, Jamel Charlo not only is a savage for taking a fight, but I need people to understand he is at a huge disadvantage, bro. He is at an absolutely huge disadvantage going into a fight with Earl Spence Jr. if they fight at 154. And you may ask, well, Knockout, why do you say this? Why is this your take? Why are you making this video? Because of Derrick James, bro. Derrick James is a very good trainer. On his way, potentially, to becoming a Hall of Fame trainer. Jamel Charlo continue on his trajectory. Earl Spence continues on his trajectory. We'll see what happens with Frank the Ghost Martin. If he can somehow rebuild what Anthony Joshua got going on and get him to his former glory and shit. Like, that resume building up. <laughs> that, that, that resume building up. And guys that are good trainers like Derrick James, the last thing that they need is an uh, inside that, that you need to allow them if you're going against one of their fighters. is You don't want to allow Derrick James to get too many looks at you. And Jamel Charlo has done just that. Derrick James been training him, been having training camps with him, been with him for years now. He know the ins and outs of Jamel Charlo, what he good at, what he bad at, what he like, what he don't like, his weaknesses, his strengths. And you don't want him putting the game plan together if you Jamel Charlo against you. And the person that he putting the game plan together for is one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world and Earl Spence Jr. That is going to put Jamel Charlo at a huge disadvantage if that fight happened because... There is no question who er, who Derrick James is going to train. If if Earl Spence Jr. and Jamel Charlo get it popping, there is absolutely no chance that Derrick James would train Jamel Charlo over Earl Spence Jr., bro. He is going to be in Earl Spence Jr.'s corner. And as a result, no matter how much love Derrick James tell you he got for Jamel Charlo, he's been working with Jamel Charlo since Jamel was a grown-ass man. He, he he raised Earl Spence Jr. up in this boxing shit, basically. Earl had a trainer before him, but he's been training Earl since he was 15 years old, bro. He gonna, he, gonna, he gonna rock with Earl, bro. That's who he gonna train. And, bro, Earl having Derrick James in his corner to help him prepare for a Jamel Charlo fight if that fight happens, after Derrick James having Jamel in camp, That's a huge disadvantage, man. On top of Earl may or may not already just be a better fighter than Jamel Charlo, more complete. May just be strong as shit down up at 154. It's already rumored. I don't know because I ain't, I ain't in the sparring and shit. They already say they just sparred and Earl and got the better of them. On multiple occasions. Like, that's the, the word on the street. So, it's a lot of things. That leads you to believe that if that shit happened, bro, you might have to favor Earl in that fight as great as Jamel is. And one of the key reasons that I'm looking at it like, damn, bro, like that's some that's some big boy shit. That's big dog shit. You know what I mean? That's big heart. Love to see the fight. I'm pushing for the fight. Want to see it. Want to see it. Want to see Earl versus Terrence Crawford first. And then the winner move up and get whoever the champion is at 154 at the time. If that's Jamel, I don't care nothing about this friend shit. Y'all know how we get down. But I must say... If you Jamel Charlo and you thinking to the future, this is something you need to think about, man. This is something you need to, to possibly prepare yourself mentally for because that's a huge, it's a huge ask, bro. That's a huge ask. Like, you can, like, you can, ain't nothing, you, you can't throw Derrick James off your scent, bro. You can't throw him off your scent. He been training you too long and he too good of a boxing mind. Like, he gonna know. He gonna have a game plan tailored around for you, for Earl Spence if y'all fight, bro. So I don't see a lot of people talking about. It. A lot of people are excited. Oh man, that's great. We want to see the fight. We think this is a big fight. Houston versus Dallas. You know what I'm saying? They need to fight. They just like, yeah, I'm with y'all. But what you need to address, and what needs to be talked about, is the Derrick James of it all. The Derrick James in this equation. The fact that Derrick James is obviously going to be riding with Earl and he's going to train Earl for the fight if the fight happened, number one. And number two, the type of coaching and strategic and game planning disadvantage that, that leaves Jamel Charlo at, bro. With Derrick James as well as he know, his, know this fighter and shit, man. Talk about that shit, man. Y'all need to start talking about that shit. That's a big, big nugget.
and a lot of people are missing. But y'all let me know what y'all think. Comment down below, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video, turn on, on your notifications, and go follow me on Twitter at KOBoxing86TV. For breakdowns and predictions, hit my email up, knockoutboxing86yahoo.com. Don't forget I'm live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. And I'm also live Sunday mornings with the Singing OG KQKC Boxing Network. Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Appreciate y'all watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. And with that, we out of here. Peace out, y'all.